this is a testimony um, of what's called gaslighting, street theatre, um, being a targeted individual, uh, possibly related to MK Ultra and uh, that sort of practice, covert uh, ma machination against an individual. Now this testimony is a very sophisticated technology, very cruel, very powerful and very demonic um, that I have personal experience and witness that this is uh, true. This is not to convince anybody of the truth. This is because I, I know. I don't know all things. Uh, this is um, a very cruel uh, practice which um, wears you down and uh, really can overtake you. And uh, it's very crude and it, it, it influences an individual to do things they wouldn't otherwise do. And the only way that they could do that is to uh, work on the person and uh, by many devices. So I'm going to give a, con as concisely as I can the testimony of uh, um, a few days' events. Um, I may get certain events uh, mixed up in order because it was um, around 2015. I it correlated with the Hadron Collider exploding and it correlated with myself just coming out of hospital, uh, not long coming out of hospital and having a very, very bad experience in hospital uh, neglect and a very um, dubious swab taken on the very last day that I was in hospital. Um, taking my DNA and I, I personally discern and believe it's it the two are related it was to that DNA was um, ended up in second third party hands and I believe that this um, correlates with this technology um, I'm not going to use uh, the term voice to skull I'm going to use thought to skull technology um, Anybody in the Christian body who doubts this thing as paranoia, there is there is um, an element of paranoia because um, you're not sure, you're so beaten up whether uh, and your thoughts can become distorted, and it's only by the grace of God that I I could uh, get the victory over this. And if I didn't have the grace of God, it would have destroyed me. I would have had no control over this technology. And I witnessed other people really struggling, being controlled by this. And they've possibly not said anything to anybody uh, because it sounds so nuts. But I'm not, um, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed or afraid to speak out the truth. Um, so I'm going to go over the testimony of a few days' events. And I do... I can show through the testimony that, uh, that there is 100% certainty um, human hands involved. It's not, it's not schizophrenia. It's in, it's kind of like an induced psychosis, and uh, it's a cruel method to manipulate individuals, vulnerable in individuals, and lead them to do things. Now I've. This is a, um, I've been an ongoing practice throughout my life, and I experienced voice to voice to skull, thought to skull technology in around the nineties, nineteen, possibly the nineteen nineties, and that was a basic um, covert uh, targeting uh, escapade or a or a program that I was under. And I was completely unaware of it. I did believe I was paranoid. I did believe I was schizophrenic and I kept it to myself. And it's only through knowledge and other people's testimonies and experience these people overtly that um, I come to the understanding that it, I didn't have schizophrenia. It was a, 
induced psychosis by devils, evil people, uh, preying on my life like I'm a little pet project to somebody. And I personally believe that this is um, to do with uh, Watchers, the um, fallen angels. And this is um, led by that sort of uh, cooperation by these people, whether they know it or not. Um, but I'm going to share the, the scale of the organisation and the amount of people involved in this particular um, one day. Um, and the evidence that um, following their instructions, uh, not 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 willingly going along with it, but allowing myself to follow the instructions to see where it le uh, led me, and it, um, it it came forth that um, I got confirmation that there were there was definitely people involved, and um, I can't prove it. It would be denied, and and I would be the um, I I would be deemed as um, psychotic and um, unfit, an unfit witness because uh, it does draw it it does uh, induce psychosis, and and it's more than likely being filmed to, to um, you know use against me, but um, by the grace of God, I'm not not afraid of. Uh, afraid of that, um, I'm, I'm going to be honest and give an open testimony of my experience and bearing in mind that this has continued on and this is a, um, a following effort, this is like a leap, this is like a quantum leap in the scale and the technology of the targeting that I was experiencing and this is automated so personally I believe there's like a scientific body involved, satellite technology um digital mapping and tracking of your of yourself and how that's done that uh, if you if you if you heard of something called Seldar where the um they can track you by various means um by your by your body signature by your frequency of your body and that can be tracked by um uh communication pylons and satellite. Uh, this is all being. This needs to be studied. This is all being uh, researched and witnessed and uh, shown to be true. And this is how I um, grasped the knowledge of of these experiences and made partly made sense of what's happening to me. I cannot identify the people, um, but it's a very powerful body, and it's almost like a um, Hollywood crew who actually um, are organised and uh, syn synchronised and correlate and work work the operation on an individual. Now this particular event was, in my, 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 my opinion, to trigger me into a programme that had been, I'd been preconditioned and the the trigger almost worked, but it failed. It broke down because of, because of Jesus Christ, and I, I can't really say what that program was. Possibly to um, destroy my, uh, the reputation of the gospel and my own reputation. Uh, possibly more more so myself to give give the uh, born again Christians a bad reputation by my actions trying to get me to rant in the street uh, by the grace of God I held my tongue I didn't react to any of the promptings or the or the movings that they were trying to direct me to and 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 I, I could discern it they were changing tracks every time when something failed they would try another angle and another angle and I, um, I, I kind of led them along a bit and gained some information and then broke free from it and uh, so I'll begin with now um, I'd just come through an experience of fighting to get my mother out of hospital she was being pers pers personally and purposely neglected and they, they people in the hospital let me know 
what they were doing and they let me know that they were there indirectly so I had a, 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 a battle to get my mum out who wasn't being purposely wasn't being treated and they knew I was on my own they knew I was a vulnerable adult and they they just wanted to show you and this this ties into my brother's death um, in the 1980s so it's all been ongoing on targeted on my family um, so this partic particular episode led to further, it sort of failed, but then it carried it, they didn't give up, it carried on going, and it, and I picked up a little plant, a little, another little project of theirs, which um, I took into my home, and that happened on the, the day I'm going to recount. So, uh, bearing in mind, I'd just been through a very stressful experience with with my mother and my mother passing away and them trying to covertly get rid of her life which they succeeded eventually and uh, indirectly and it, there's nothing nothing I can do to prove it because it um, I was threatened and there's many people involved so it was all uh, very carefully covered up and overwritten and uh, that, uh, there's such a powerful control on um, keeping you, because uh, I'm a suffer from disassociation, traumatized disassociation. So that's been imputed. That's been that's part. That's where my program started. Started, and that was by compromise and some blackmail in my family's life. So someone had a black a hold over my family to get to get um, what I believe to traumatize me. And keep it isolated and then I was passed on to the the, the, the organization that um, initiated that uh, trauma and that has followed me throughout my life and building possibly building up to this moment so it's a long phase plan of, of my life like um, mapped out for me so um, at points in my life it's pick me up and try to steer me or condition what what options I have available then they they're at every junction they, they basically know my limitations so that they know where to camp out and wait for me and uh, the Mormon church is in, involved or, or or in in cooperation with this body so it's a big organization possibly working with other organ or other criminal shadow organizations utilizing um, masons and you know that that sort of um, criminal body, that criminal organisation, that shadow organisation. Um, now, I I was almost breaking, having a breakdown. I was so physically stressed, but by the grace of God, I could uh, endure and um, fight it. And and they were soften, softening me up with uh, covert technologies, cooking me in my bedroom and voices and uh, thoughts into my mind saying, oh, you're going to hell. And then they were heating me up and putting images, very, very powerful images into my mind. Um, almost like spiritual images, like spiritual visions. Um, which I knew, which I knew weren't of God, but they were so powerful. They were making me question, but it, so, but only by the renewing of my mind could and, and soberness in the Holy Spirit could I discern the difference. They were that powerful that they were so real that they were hard to dismiss. You know, I had to it really try to turn over my testimony, and and that's that's their game to undermine my testimony, to uh, beat me up and to soften me up. So I was being softened up in my home uh, with all this um, cruel treatment and uh, technology which fires through your wall and uh, cooks you and uh, playing sounds in the house. I even had my house, in house infiltrated. Um, all, all and, I, and you'll find that that's common through other targeted individuals or, or people on this sort of programme or, or these techniques 
in very diverse manners being utilised on various various individuals and groups. So the street theatre event and happened uh, one morning. Now, after my mum died, I, I, I started to get the memory, the pieces started to come back together of my trauma. I remembered my trauma and then I was sort of trying to discover and make sense of it. So the, mem the full memory come back of m myself being traumatised and partly being abused, but that hasn't come back fully. Still today, I, I'm getting um, very faint little pieces here and there. Um, I think it's po possibly too much at the moment, so it, it's something I, I wait upon the Lord for him to reveal in, in his own good time. And, you know, God willing, he will lead me into making more sense of this in a later date. Um, but I was really drained, really traumatised and trying to deal with this trauma and the impact of that, realising the impact of how my life had been a lie and a setup, how my family were involved. I knew my mum was carrying some guilt so I could put the pieces together that my mum was it was destroying my mum inside and she she was compromised and she somebody is twisting her arm and somebody uh, had, I believe is twisting her family's arm and using one against another but not all of the family just a few members within the family now I I, I cannot clarify that a hundred percent I may be wrong uh, but but that's what the um, all the signs point to in in my uh, personal contact with my mother and uh, the circumstances I was traumatised in isolation and I woke up one morning and I may, I, I'd done something I wouldn't usually do so they were steering me to, to make a doctor's appointment now it's not something I wanted to do but I did make a doctor's appointment so that's what got me got me going into town and I got in, got, uh, I was driving, I, I didn't have a car because of my car accident. I, I, um, I wasn't really driving, but uh, I borrowed um, my dad's car. Uh, I can't remember what car it was. Cor Toyota Corolla, I think, at the time. And this was after a car accident that I was staged and set up that was uh, right the car off. So this was a uh, the car following that, that accident. So I was suffering from trauma from the accident and post-traumatic stress from that. The, the post-traumatic stress from the memory of being traumatised as a two-year-old and plus the trauma of the murdering of my mother and the concealment of it and the threatening of me to keep my mouth shut and then the blackmail that they would make up um, things about me that I was uh, abusing my mother in care when I was uh, looking after my mum in care because I was the only one taking care of my mum. My dad was completely um, disassociated. He, he, he was just like a shut shut down. Um, my, my father can't even remember certain events, my birth, circumstances which all correlates to my isolated trauma he was kept away and uh, the person who traumatized me was at my mother's was at my birth so there's some very uh, it all started to make sense so I was going through all of this on on my shoulders so I was easy prey and I'd just come out of hospital from a clap um, not just come out of hospital, but I'd been in hospital for cap collapsed lung, which is where they took my DNA swab. That was a few years before, previous to this event, um, before my mum became... Uh, as I um, come out of hospital, it was um, not long after that, my mum developed a brain tumour, and I believe that was induced. And to get her into hospital, to part of this programme. Now, whether that's... Uh, that highly organised, or whether that's um, organised by solely by the devil, and 
you people are utilised in that in his purpose here and there and everywhere. Uh, but m my findings are it's one body of people who've been consistently in the shadows of my life. Um, so I woke up one made this appointment and I got in the car. It's about a two mile journey to the town and uh, I got to the end of halfway down, it's two straight roads really and parallel to a railway line and you go halfway in the journey you go under the railway and then the, the other road is parallel on the other side of the railway. And before we, I went under the railway, there's a, quite a large roundabout with uh, trees in the middle and grass. And I noticed that I picked up a tail and it was very odd that it was almost like sync, in sync with me. And it was very uh, close to my, my tail. So I tried to, to shake it off a bit, but it was, as I accelerated, it, it it accelerated exactly the same time without any delay and when I decelerated it decelerated with, with, with um, no delay and I thought this is almost like computer uh, being run on a computer program and that's what I started to discern that this is almost like a computer program and I, I you know and I was involved in it and I I got to this roundabout and I thought, well, I'm going to go round the roundabout to see if I can shake this tail off. And and the car is quite nippy, it can quite fast, it's quite sensitive on the accelerator, so I could really accelerate away quickly. And again, it didn't, it there was no lag, no no delay. It stuck with me perfectly round the roundabout, and I went round the roundabout twice, and then under the bridge. Under the bridge is another little roundabout, and I picked up an, another car on the trail. So there's two cars, and the person expression in the car was absolutely horrified. They, it was almost like they didn't know what was going on to them. They were almost like in tears and being controlled. And I picked up this tail. Now, I wasn't being controlled, but the people I'd, on, on following me in the car were being controlled and that really got me worried because I thought well this is powerful stuff and I, I I had some knowledge of this and experience of this and I'd researched many areas to um, I held back for a while I had all these experiences and with my own experience I didn't really want to believe it I didn't wasn't really sure what it was so I'd, I spent about two years researching it so by this time I had a, quite a, an extensive knowledge of, of the many MOs and the many experiences people have witnessed about. And I, and I thought, blimey, this is, this is um, powerful stuff and this is happening to me right now. And um, I'd, I'd never really had a street theatre scene, not that I was aware of. I probably had and, and completely not seen it, taken it, absolutely no notice of it because a lot of my uh, targeters have to bring it to my attention because I'm just so, I'm in a world of my own I, I wasn't taking any notice so it, it, it was almost like they had to lead me to show me that they were, they were there but this I couldn't ignore so I picked up this tail of about three cars up until the main, till I got to my destination. Now, I had some time to before my doctor's appointment, and I thought I'd I'd park in the, in 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 a certain place where I could park. But I I headed for that place, but I didn't actually get there. Um, I was, this is where I was triggered and how I was triggered is I approached a main roundabout now it's a dual carriageway, it's a big A road and there's one, two, three, four, five um, outlets on this roundabout now 
as I pulled onto the roundabout, there was all these um, cars blocking the main road coming onto the roundabout, so only my car and those behind me had access onto the roundabout. Every junction point was blocked to stop anyone getting in between, cutting in between me. So it was, I thought, well, this is very highly orchestrated. And then I wondered why cars were just, everyone was tooting on their horn. At every single junction I passed, people were tooting for the cars in front who were blocking them. <coughs> Excuse me. Were blocking them. So they were gating me and, and funneling me down this, where I was heading. So it's almost like they were steering me where to go. Then I got onto the main road and there's these traffic lights and it's three lanes. Now on the left there's a row of shops um, and I thought well, oh, oh, there's all these white vans like um, uh, HGV free vans um, about a ton, uh, white panelled and they were all identical and they all pulled out like um, synchronised swimmers, one, two, three, four, all pulled out in sync and blocked that lane and I was in the middle lane and then there's these other uh, lorries that were on the, on the on that roundabout involved uh, blocked that lane also so I could tell by this point that it was all orchestrated because the roundabout was blocked then there's this orchestration of as I was driving past they all pulled out one, it was just like um, uh, swimmers all falling off uh, when they hold on to the rail and they fall backwards one, two, three, four, five, all in a perfect synchronised motion and all these lorries pulled out one after the other, blocked that lane the other lane was blocked and then the traffic lights were red now when they went green I was in the middle and I was at the front of the traffic lights with these two lorries either side, a queue of lorries either side and I, I could tell that they were like all, all in communication with one another because it's so orchestrated and also the other side was uh, blocked as well and when the lights turned green these lorries just stood there and they, they blocked the whole road up and I could hear behind me all the tooting and the the, the the you know the the, the ruckus of people being aggravated by it and I, I I thought I had to question myself have I jumped a red light why are they still at the traffic lights and I looked in my mirror and the light was green it was, it was positively green I wondered if I just imagined the green light I had to question my thinking so I was driving up towards the next round main junction roundabout there was absolutely no traffic following me so they were holding back and I think this is what triggered me and I thought oh, that was really strange you know what's going on and then I'd done a right at the roundabout and I didn't park to where I was parking I parked in an old abandoned police station and then something that that's when um, I started to be becoming um, kind of like a psychosis I abandoned my car and I left the doors wide open and I threw, I just left my wallet, I just threw my wallet, I, something triggered with inside me so I, I, I can't explain what, it's almost like a pre-program or a program that was running and I thought oh you know what's going, then I started to try and fight it. I think it was to make me break down in the doctors so they were trying to get me into the doctors in this in this state of mind and then that the doctor would go we, we need to section this person he's uh, psychotic and I was psychotic I was experiencing a induced psychosis but I had my conscience aware of what what was going on and I managed to um, uh, I had some time around the town and I was um, I took a walk into the town and, and and it was almost like um, instructions telling me to follow these cycle paths and I followed these cycle paths under direction and uh, 
it led me to a little seat under a tree and I sat down under the tree in the town and um, there was a, an instruction to look at the panels on, on the building and I looked over to the panels of the building so you've got brick wall and then these plain panels but in between the plain panels was a picture of another part of the town that I'd already passed, the roundabout that had been blocked off. It's an old clock tower with a clock on it, it's a state agent's. And the photograph on the clock was a certain time. I think it was something like 10 to 10. And, uh, and I thought, well, this is all very Masonic. Why, why, and I thought, what, yeah, what, what, what do you want me to look at that for? And then, the instruction was well to follow the follow this other cycle route, and then I then I um, <laughs> I met these sweepy guys, these cleaners, and they they were synchronised as I as I turned down this alley, they 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 come towards me, and and I could tell that they were part of this, and I'd done something stupid. I, I climbed in into a skip and um, behave really bizarrely. You know, this was um, under due arrest and they were laughing. And then, then I broke, broke from the psychosis and I had a normal conversation with him, but this bloke was uncomfortable about that. And, uh, but he was grinning. So I could tell that these guys, and, and I could tell that these guys didn't, weren't belong to the local area. Um, because the equipment they had wasn't, I'd worked on the council, the equipment they had was uh, almost like extra. And uh, that was a bizarre experience. Then further up the road, heading towards this clock tower, which I was completely, hadn't correlated to two at this time. Um, I, 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 there's some more instru instruction and it was sort of like directed though it's coming out of the, the um, an air vent it, well, I, I don't think it was coming out of the air vent but it was that I was being led to believe it was like like I would say oh I'm hearing voices out of the air vent they're speaking to me out of the air vent but I, I was getting almost like directed voice to skull and again I'd done something completely that I wouldn't do. I just sat down and laid down on the on the pavement, and then and then I caught myself doing it, going, "What am I doing?" And I got up again. I shook it off like I did getting in the dustbin. So I think they were trying to get me to do um, delusional things, and they were delusional. It's not something I would I, I would usually do. It was called almost like a triggered impulse. So this thing was start starting to get a grip on me. But I could I couldn't stop it, but I could break free from it. And then I, after that, I walked past through the areas. The alley took me from from the sea, and following the cycle path, it took me into a large it's a large car park, which took took me onto the main road that I'd entered into the town. Then I got to this clock, and and the and the. In in the photograph, the window was slightly open, and they were trying to tell me, oh, the, they were, I was getting instruction on the Queen's up there, and uh, she wants to meet you, and I and I ignored it. I thought, yeah, right, the Queen's up there in in, in the clock tower because it's an old uh, listed building, and I thought, oh, I questioned it. I thought, well, maybe you know, is the Queen up there? But funnily enough, the the clock was wrong. Now I I lived in the I've lived in the town all my life, and I know that the clock works because at, at previous times I, I've checked the time, and it's been different times, and it works. And I I thought I'm going to go to when I got walked up to the clock, I could see that it was ten to ten. It wasn't ten to ten in real time. It was like ten to ten, and. It's an old-fashioned building with those um, window lap handles with the curl on them, and it was opened 
in the photo it was opened um, about 45 degrees and there's a little crack the window was open now that correlated with the real time building the, the window was it was almost identical to the it was identical to the photograph and I thought well that's no coincidence you know there's this um, esoteric um, hidden meaning in the, and I'd never seen this panel of this picture before it, on the wall you'd have to sit under the tree where there's a bench all the way around it and look off at an angle and you'd see this very narrow panel which perhaps has changed in pictures because it would be a, a picture put on the inside of glass um, at the full length of the, of the wall of the building now I'd never seen it, noticed it before and it'd be, I'd be interested to see if it's still there so I got to the clock and it correlated with with the real thing and I thought well I'm going to go to this estate agent and I went into the estate agent and, and um, I said it, I asked him about um, some uh, rent in the house uh, rent in my house he said oh you know I've been he said do you live over he gave me he he gave me the exact area where I lived and I said oh, well, that's strange he knows where I live he says oh yeah I've been I've been down your way to uh, look at some houses and I thought well that's a coincidence isn't it and I, I said oh there's some very wicked people I started talking I gave my testimony about Jesus Christ and I also um, gave my testimony about religion and there's some very dark people around and he said and um, I asked him about the clock tower and he, and he said, I said, do you own the clock tower? And he was kind of grinning and smirking. And I, I, I said, uh, he said, no, it's owned by a little old lady on the Isle of Wight, but she rents it to us. And I said, what about the clock? I said, why is the clock stopped at 10 to 10? And, and, and he said, oh, the clock's been broken for years. Well, I knew that was a lie. So they'd set the clock someone in that building would have had to set the clock to that time and I, I personally believe it's this guy and this guy knew that I would be directed in there also so this is all orchestrated and completely controlled so it's one thing after the other so I I said oh can I you know I would want to go up and have a look and he said well I can't the, this lady from the Isle of Wight she you know it's locked so I, I don't know what the truth is. I don't. I, I don't believe. I never believe what I'm told by by this sort of covert voices. You know, um, or even if they come to, to spoke to me face to face, I wouldn't believe what they told me. Um, but that correlated with um, what I'd been directed by a voice to thoughts of skull, thoughts of my mind, thoughts of my my thoughts and they were controlling me by thoughts and directions now as I crossed the road the voice said hold in the button of the traffic now the traffic light had just gone green to red and, and as I approached it it went green to red and, and the voice instantly said just hold it's almost like a, weird, a secret service trick he said and, and the voice said um, the thought said hold the button in and it immediately change it back to green and I thought well I'll try it I held the button and it just went green I thought well let me know and I crossed the road then then before the uh, clock tower it's a job center now I'd had dealings with the job center that they'd broken the law and um, overrid a decision that was a medical decision and put me back into the job center and previously I'd been in there and dealt with them and I headed for the job center and I and I got to the door and I and I I caught myself what I was doing and um, I, I uh, was asked what because they got a security guy on the door and I was stopped from going in and they said what well, you know well, what are you doing what what do you who are you what are you coming in there for and I didn't really know what I was in there for and I and I said oh, I'm just going to pass a note to 
the lady who assessed me and I, and I said, um, could you just pass it on? And I got myself out of there quickly because I realised that I was being or, or almost like led and controlled. And again, I broke free from it. And then I went to the clock. I sang, um, spoke to the guy and then saw the window open and the correlation. And he, he lied and said, oh, the clock was broken. This was just before my appointment. In the doctor's... Um, I was very aware at this time and I, I was praying I just need to be sober and, and I didn't know why I'd made the appointment. I was almost like bullied into making, tricked into making an appointment and I, the, like the thought was made, you know, like uh, led me to make an appointment which I didn't really want to make. Although I, I, would have, I did need to speak to somebody but certainly not that GP because she was involved in my mother's palliative care and I knew she'd broken the law and well, she was part of it uh, indirectly or directly I, could, I can't, cannot really say directly I, I believe and I was being led in there to be assessed and for her to make a, make a report or something but I kept my cool and I, I just um, I said I just needed to come and tell you and I told her about um, what, what I the revelation I had from from my mother and and the trauma, and she sort of went oh didums kind of thing, and I said, and I left, and uh, I I I got out by the skin of my teeth, and then after that I went back round. I thought I'd have a walk round back back round the town, and I went to the stationers. And I got, I can't remember what I brought, um, possibly some notepads. And I got this, I got the, all, the change I got were brand spanking new one pound notes, one pound coins, and they're all different. And then I went to WH Smith's and then they were leading me to go and have a look, go and buy yourself a pen. And I thought, Parker pen, I like Parker pens, but I didn't want a Parker pen, and I didn't need a Parker pen, but I went to the Parker pen cabinet, and they were all in an esoteric hierarchy, and they were showing me and leading me things, like a triangle, and they were telling me which the, the, the direction was to buy a certain pen for a certain reason, and it's almost like they were grooming me to be some sort of secret agent, and I was sort of becoming more aware of what was going on and taking more, back more of control and going along with it to see where it led. And I thought, all right, I'll have a look at the pens and I saw it, but I didn't buy it. I just turned around and walked out. And then I caught myself saying something really strange to a couple and um, just out my mouth. And I thought, oh, you know, almost like you possess, but I wasn't possessed. This was um, directed energy powerful uh, technology to keep tripping me up putting their thoughts into my thoughts and triggering through my vulnerability and tiredness this um almost like they had the code to my actions and they were imputing them and i they were biting and then i was catching it and stopping it but i said something and this guy was almost like upset and then but then I talked myself out of it, it um, and he backed down and I thought well, that was close what did I say that for it was, all, it was pretty rude almost rude and and um, I kind of turned it around and, and then thought I've got to go home I've got to get out of here and and then I paid for what I, I did buy in the shop I can't remember what I brought in WA Smith's um, possibly a card or something and I got three, this time I got three two pound coins brand new and they were all different, completely different. So I had this um, set and I thought, oh, this is quite a coincidence, I'm getting all these brand new coins. And then um, after that, just around the corner from that is uh, JJB Sports. And it, the, the, the voice was saying, uh, the the thoughts of Scar was saying, go and buy yourself a white hat. There's a white hat, go and buy it. 
and I thought, all right, I'll go, I'll go and have a look see if there's a, a, a Pacific house, this one. Uh, now, they t basically told me that it will get a white baseball cap. Now, this was the only white baseball cap in the shop, and there was hundreds of baseball caps. Now, this one had been on the floor, had all footprints over it, it was absolutely dirty, and, and no one was going to buy it. And uh, that's, that's the hat they, don't, they, they wanted me to buy. So I thought, I, I, I went, I picked the white hat up and I spoke to a, a shop assistant. I said, is this the only hat you've got? Have you got, a, can I have a clean one? Because I, I, I brought it. And he said, oh, hang on a minute, I'll go and look. And he was sort of like excited by it. What? He was like surprised. I thought, there was something going on. Then I was speaking to this young girl. And then again, I almost was behaving out of character with this girl. Now, it, I, I didn't do anything appropriate, but um, it, the conversation was not my conversation. It was almost like directed, and, and I, I sort of went with it. Um, and then he came back, the guy came back. I was speaking to this girl. Um, it's kind of like... Um, it started off with this uh, being directed, and then and then it was myself, and and uh, I was speaking to this girl, um, while waiting for this guy to come back, and he came came back with a brand new hat, and and uh, he said, um, "We've been wondering what all this is about." And I and I and I wanted to know what. And he said, "Well, someone's come in here and said that someone would come in and buy a buy a hat." He took it to the till and rung it up. And in in it was um, that label and uh, competition winner label. Now the shop. I don't I don't know if the shop knew this. Or they'd been in there and been told that there's a promotion that someone would come in and buy the competition, pick the competition hat. And they were all... He told me that the whole staff had been wondering all day what this was all about. And they, they couldn't make sense of it. And they were as surprised as I was because they were told that someone would come in and buy a white hat. And, and low betide, I'd walked in and asked for this dirty old hat that no one else is going to buy on the shelf. And so he rung it up, and, and he this is the one, he brought out a brand spanking new one, so the dirty one was purposely on the shelf, so no one else would would be likely to buy it. So when he went into the store and then come back out all excited, in the hat was two labels. The One of the, one of the labels had a, a competition prize and a number and a code on it, and that's the that that that's just the normal label which I tore out and I've written some scriptures on it because I use it, it at the moment it's a scripture marker and in the hat was a mask like one of those party masks that you wear at um, Vienna one of those old-fashioned um, just like a black black mask with a hot little eye holes in it it was car it was a cheap cardboard cut out printed with like uh, wings on the side, very Illuminati sort of thing. The one, ones you would hold like that on a stick to um, conceal your identity to be a bit more mysterious. So uh, this prize was a, a, to a party like that. Um, to be, and to, to, um, to be invited to a party, because it was a promotion from Puma apparently, and uh, so I, I thought, oh, very well. And then I left the shop, walked round the town to the main road, and, and I was getting instructions, kind of, or suggestions um, about being recruited. So what I did was... Um, and I knew that they were around, so that whoever it was, because of all the street theatre on the way in, and then I know the way they work, they know where you are, and they can communicate, they can 
they can know what you're thinking because they're talking to you. So they know your responses, how they measure your responses and your thoughts, and I don't know. But they can, because they've got, you know, they can, a pilot can guide a missile onto a target now. So they, they can um, translate your thoughts, and um, that's how they communicate. So whether it was a satellite or it was somebody pointing a device in a concealed building, but I knew that they were monitoring me, and I tore out the, the competition ticket. And and I and I said out basically in my mind, that's it. You know, I'm not playing anymore. You know, I'm not, I'm not following you any more instructions. I've had enough. I said, and I chucked the publicly chucked the um, prize winning ticket because on it had a phone number and a, an identity or a code that, I, that you would give. I I, I expect to claim your prize and get further information. I threw it in the bin. I didn't want anything to do with it. Now, perhaps I should have kept it, but I wanted to let them know that I wasn't playing ball. And again, they wanted me to walk along, walk along every white line, they wanted me to walk along it to show that I was playing ball and I was willing. And uh, I deliberately didn't walk play any more games, I didn't walk along these uh, white white uh, cycle lane, white lines. And I, I went back to my car. Now I got back to my car in my own mind and thought, why on earth have I abandoned it in the police station? The doors were still wide open and my wallet hadn't been touched. And I, and I thought, what has been going on here? You know, this is powerful. And it's behind the library. Now I got back into my car. Now I had I hadn't put a parking ticket. I just it, it, it's the old it's the old local police station that's closed down. So that it's where the police would have parked, and it's in the library car park. It would have been illegal to park there. So a traffic warden hadn't caught it. Otherwise I'd have been clamped, and had a notice on the windscreen, and no one. Strangely enough, I noticed my car doors were wide open like wings, like the car had been ripped out. And my wallet was just sitting on, on the seat, I think. Now, this had my driving licence in, my credit, uh, my debit card. And it was untouched. And I thought, and I was going back, remembering that I'd done it, expecting, uh, you know, my car's, I've probably got a ticket. I was expecting a clown for ticket and my wallet to be missing. It's all it's all untouched, and I, as a opposite the opposite the car park, it's big open car park. Is the library, the back of the library. Now sitting at the back of the library, there's this young lad. Now he's all cut up his arms. Now he was planted. I didn't know that in hindsight, and he was in the right sorry state. He'd just been he'd just been um, on a suicide watch in hospital, and they keep kept throwing him out, he'd been a few times, and they packed him off with an, enough drugs to kill himself. And that's what the hospital basically suggested to him, as he is telling me. And um, I thought, I can't, I said, this is how they knew my personality. They knew that I, I wouldn't leave him there. And I said, have you got any anywhere to stay? And he was homeless. He was in a mess, His, he had gashes all up his arms. And I, I, I said, um, I said, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I, I mean, I said, have you got somewhere to stay? And he said, no. I said, right, um, come, come back to my, come back to, with me, and we'll talk about it. And I said, um, I said, I, I, I'm very wary of you as much as you must be wary of me. So I said, we will drive, we will drive and talk. And then I, I gave him some certain conditions and rules and that it would only be temporary and then I would I would notify people that he was with me and also I got, got his uh, relatives that he was not in contact with and there was a, I later found out um, an abusive relationship in his life so he was like a traumatised 
victim as I was. Um, and he was from, uh, I believe, a, a coven family. And he, he was being groomed and he was used as a piece. Now, whether he was directly involved and knew what he was doing, or he was being covertly led to be involved and used as part of the uh, operation, uh, part of the gig on me, part of the theatre on me, part of the uh, programme, like a little mole. And um, I uh, allowed him in and uh, contacted his family just to let, let them know that he was with me. And uh, this lady was a, claimed to be a born-again Christian and from a local church. Now, that turned out to be a coven. And... Um, that brought more people into it to covertly handle me. So it was all, all to handle me and undermine my testimony. Now, I preached against them. I preached against their pastor and witnessed, and they were trying to make me feel guilty for not being part of a church body, trying to handle me into a church. Uh, and I was uh, contending with the people that they were sending round to... Um, uh, contending back with scriptures that I, I, in my liberty I, they had no control over me so I was barely um, they were trying to suggest like own me and handle me so, but I was resisting by the grace of God and I had this little little lamb in my little poorly bloke in my uh, home and he you know he, he was a uh, suicidal so I had to cope with all that and that all led to further covert targeting, and, and this guy spied me. And then there was all this other handling going on, and, and still through the walls I was being cooked and heated up by this... Um, my house was live on my uh, RF meter and my uh, gauss meter, gauss meter. It was very, very high indeed. The whole house was charged like a microwave oven. And I was being um, remotely led, which was involved, which correlated with this. Um, it's very hard to describe what, how powerful it is, and what 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 they were trying to direct me to do. Since that um, had failed, and what they triggered me to activate something failed, they were trying again with this, this young guy, so perhaps he was a backup plan. Because when that failed and I didn't go shouting through the town, delusional, because that's what the impulse I was getting to just start uh, preaching, but not really, um, not in the spirit, but by by their driving. And I, I held, my, held my peace and held my tongue. I thought, no, that's in, it's inappropriate. I'm, you know, I'm not in the state to do that and I'm not prepared I wasn't I would have been I wasn't prepared and um, I got back home and then I was still getting the voice to skull the thought to skull and um, I put him in my bedroom and I I'm not in this room and uh, I was in the spare room and I was emptying my pockets of all these coins and then they were some I was directed to lay these coins out in a certain way and they revealed a certain pattern. They all they're like the the, the, the two pound coins had an inner silver bit and there was an English and Irish and a Welsh Welsh one I think. England, Ireland and Wales or one one that was in Northern Ireland and one was in Britain and one was one was uh, minted in Wales or minted for Wales. And it's the same with the pound coins. And they all stacked in a certain way. And they were trying to tell me, show me that their power, that, oh, you know, through this, um, through the pens, through the coins, that they were trying to groom me to be this um, secret agent, you know, and I, I, you know, I kind of resisted. And, uh, and then this, this other young lad sort of, 
opened up our next episode, which I'm uh, not going to go into at the, at the minute. But that was my that was one day. Following on for that, after now this young guy had, had a breakdown, and I had to throw him out. He went into he 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 took he slashed his wrist. He was stealing and drink and drinking my dad's alcohol. So it come to a p and leaving the door, going out and leaving the door open. So I just had to get rid of him. I had to remove him from from my home. I even um, went through the hospital with him once. Then he went back a second time, and I I for, um, I wasn't his lawful attorney, but he was asking for me to be his lawful attorney. And I acted on his behalf and went through with him and and I asked to see his previous uh, record and they wouldn't let me have it. So I got got his mother on the phone and, and got permission to um, act for her on his behalf. And I saw he had no record. He, there was no record of him being through the hospital the, the first time. And they weren't keeping a record of him this time because I called back the guy who was pretending to fill out a form and when we, when I um, looked at it, it had nothing on it. So they were just taking him through the hospital and then throwing him out. So whether he that it was part of it or whether that's how they were processing uh, people with mental health problems, which is more than likely because they, the hospital don't like to be... Uh, to deal with people with mental health, they they, they haven't got the um, always got the uh, apparatus to process people, so they they just do a quick job and sling them out the door with loads of pills. And other times they section people, but he wasn't being sectioned; he was just being thrown out on the street, which is quite alarming. And it, and and that's where I picked him up. So it was, it was the third time he'd been through the hospital. So after he couldn't come back, I, I, I found him and got him into a temporary accommodation where there was rules that he had to follow and I testified to him about Christ and that he needed to repent and to overcome his problems and I said I can't possibly cope with him and my dad uh, but, he, but we, he was welcome to visit and he he got a place, but it it didn't last long, and then eventually he ended up back to his mum had thrown him out because of his behaviour and him slashing himself, and then she couldn't cope, so he went back to um, living in his mum's garage. Thankfully, his suicide attempts were weren't really serious. He just wanted some help. He was just saying, "Look, help me." You keep throwing me out of the hospital, so I'm gonna. He was rebelling, and by rebelling, he was cutting himself. And he was, he was possessed. He was, um, and I didn't realise that. Um, so I fought that out by the power of prayer and the grace of God. And I said, the only way you're going to overcome your problems, because I, I was frank with him. I said, you're possessed, and and. All, all this uh, activity was uh, he, he he had a le he had a iniquitous group of demons in him, and they were too powerful for me to handle. So I had to uh, fight fight it by the grace of God and prayer, and uh, I had that battle, um, and eventually he he moved up to where his um he got a little better after a while so perhaps some good was done but then i lost touch with him then after that i was i was in i was worn out and i was trying to um recover from the trauma i'd experienced as a two-year-old and I, I was kind of you know having little episodes of breakdowns and processing day to day after going through all that all this all this stuff and then I couldn't sleep I'd had that car accident so I set up for a car accident and that was all 
orchestrated and that was all written written over so I couldn't get any avenue into into get a, any diagnosis and or I wasn't taken to hospital uh, there's a false report by the ambulance driver written up on me and the police um, falsified the report said it was a uh, 20 miles an hour, it was more like 50 or 60 miles an hour that I was hit, stationary and there's no way that I, I, I wouldn't be seen you know, I was right in the middle of the road indicating to turn right and this car just drove straight through me so that person, I believe, was um, by stealth weapons, uh, distracted to not or remotely controlled to drive straight through me now, having seen this other lady being that I picked up the tail that she was overtaken, this technology can overtake certain vulnerable people. Now, it overtook me, but I, it, that was because I was in such a worn state of mind that they were easily getting a hold on on my actions, and I was it, it was biting. So I knew that they, uh, this sort of technology can control people. So the car accident was set up. So after all, all, all of that passed, um, recovering from the accident, I, I did. I was suffering severe post-traumatic stress and from the car accident and jolting up in bed and reliving the accident in slow motion, plus the trauma of what happened to me as a child being traumatised and violently abused and, and sexually abused somewhere. I um, couldn't really go out in the day. I, was, I, I would jump and break down and trip. My nerves were like, I was like this all the time. So uh, even if a car drove past me, it would trigger the trauma. So I was avoiding going out in the busy of the day and I'd wait till like three o'clock in the morning when it was still and quiet to go out for a walk. And what I would do is walk up to the local 24 hour garage, just about a mile up the main road. And I would either get some milk or a bag of sweets or something just for the peaceful walk to get some exercise and recover from not only my accident, but just to, you know, just to pray, just to rest in my salvation and walk up to get, you know, just for some fresh air. And one, one evening I was walking um, up my road, to the end of my road, onto a main road and follow the main road to the 24 hour garage. As I was walking up the end of my road is a woodland that's parallel to the footpath as I walked past, um, I saw these laptop light come on. And I thought, what? What is somebody doing in the woods with a laptop? And, and it's like, as I walked past, the laptop lid come up. Then I walked past, walked a bit further, and then again, I triggered another laptop. And then there's another one. So they were allow, they were letting me know that they were out, the, the covert was now becoming over. Then I turned onto the main road and then there's um, the corner of the woods and there's a high bank like a, um, uh, what, uh, like a what, uh, what do they call it, um, like you'd get in a farmer's field. You've got a, you got a high dirt bank with um, hazel trees growing on the top, that sort of thing, like a hedgeway, that's what I was thinking of. And again, the laptops, lights were coming on. So there, there, there was at least four people with laptops monitoring me as I walked past, and I thought that's no coincidence. And then I walked up the the main road, it's about a mile, and I saw this young guy running towards me, scared out of his. He was white as a sheet, and he, he, I could hear him up the road. He was drunk shouting his mouth off really large in it like up by outside this hotel and uh, the next minute he went really quiet and then he started running towards me like something had spooked him so for being a larry mouthy drunk youth or yob he was now this passive little white sheep sprinting past me about 30 miles an hour like he'd seen a ghost now, 
When I got to where he'd been speaked, there was all these, um, I couldn't quite see because it's quite, um, quite a lot of woodland just by a hotel, then there's a hotel, then there's a, um, it's sort of like a, um, a what are they called, a uh, um, one of those overnight hotels, uh, travel lodge, then there's a, a big steakhouse and then there's a garage, it's like a complex and in between the main road and, and the hotel and the steakhouse um, where it's where I'd cut through in, and up to the garage. The garage is right on the road but you can't walk up the main road to the garage because there's no path. The path ends and it takes you into the hotel. Now between the road and the hotel there's a big open verge and that's where this young guy was spooked. Now I could sense that there was a almost like a camouflage load of soldiers or something hiding in the hedgerows. I could see the outlines and I I, I knew that the, the, um, there was a group there but I couldn't quite see faces and outlines but I could see the movements and I could hear the uh, movement and I knew something had spooked him and I ignored them and walked past and went to the garage and then for uh, don't really, you know, I was a bit, bit scared to be honest, and I thought, well, I've got to go back. So I didn't go back that way. I walked around the dangerous bit, around the verge, around the road, and I basically walked down in the middle of. There's no cars on the road, so I thought I'm not going on the path near the woods in case somebody grabs me and drags me into the woods. So I walked in the middle of the road. So if anyone come out to get me, I'd at least have a bit of movement to run. But they weren't there on the way back. And then, and then that's when the over covert um, targeting started. And then if I was further directed. Every time I'd go out for a walk, I was being uh, tracked, followed, and steered. Like they were steering where I wanted to. Um, I I knew where I was walking, but it was interfering with my own thoughts directing me in other directions and I was resisting and I was being covertly followed by people signalling and people following behind me and, and in front of me so um, I knew that um, I was being covertly tagged and followed because there's no one that, that they were couples man and a man and a woman and people men and women and because it was like I didn't want to be walking out in um, in the daytime and I was recovering from this accident and stress. I was going out in like two, three in the morning and I knew that there was, you don't get this many couples around in a weekday at this time of night. So I was being followed by this covert team of people and being led by this uh, technology, this Fort to skull. And one night I um, tried to shake it try to beat it kind of thing but they, they were kind of tr wherever I was going these couples were behind me and in front of me and trying to trying to spook me really saying we've got you there's no wherever you go we're going to follow and um, later weeks and weeks of that plus I was getting uh, the sounds played into my home that were recorded from my home. Now I knew they had eyes and ears in my home because they stole a medical document that I uh, concealed which proved that they neglected my mother and she had an infection and they'd written on their med medical report that she didn't. But subsequently the last place my mum ended up noted that she had a, a, an infection, serious infection. Whereas when she when she come out of hospital, she had no such thing, and when she's in the hospital, she had no no such infection. But she had an infection all the time she was in there, and I believe they were giving people infections, and they gave my mum an infection. Basically, it was a trauma based conditioning to show how powerful they are and that they can kill people whenever they like. So they didn't, they kept my mum in there because she had a brain tumour. They wouldn't let me 
I was the lawful advocate, but they wouldn't let me release her because they said, oh, your mum's not fit to be in your care. So I had to challenge that. By the grace of God, I, I won and got my mum home eventually after months of tears from my mother because they were abusing her and neglecting her and not treating her. And I had no family support, no uh, legal advocate, and uh, all that. All this followed. So this covert leading was directing, trying to break me and trying to um, control me. And I follow, it was directing me uh, into, I can't remember what the reason was, it's something to do with uh, a relation of mine. And they were suggesting that he was involved with it and he would be on the end of what they were leading. So I wanted to know if they were telling the truth. And I followed it into a dense woodland about two miles into the woods to a spot where I thought that he would, he would be there to meet me, but he wasn't. And I, I stopped at a certain point, called his name, and there was no, re no reply. And then um, I shook, I stopped in this track, shook my uh, keys to make myself known and scuffed my feet to... to uh, because I could sense something and this laptop light come on right in the middle of the woods I thought oh right there's another monitor you know there's another person of the uh, covert control team and the laptop light come on and it was under a canopy they were hidden and I thought oh right that's what's on the end of it it wasn't my cousin there's nothing to do with my family relation my cousin uh, that I thought that they were suggesting he was on it but he wasn't or he, he may be, but he wasn't there. Or he might have been in the one under the laptop, I don't know, I doubt it. Um, but, or he might be, he might have been groomed to be part of it. Time will tell. But anyway, that was what the end of it, and they were trying to show me, to, uh, it's almost like they own me, like they own their pet. And, um, you know, I frankly resisted and thought, well, no, Jesus Christ owns me, you don't. And, um, and by the grace of God, they've all dispersed, they've all gone, they're all torn up, you know, they're all broken up now. All, all, all the activities dispersed, thank God. And then, but after that, I had another team on me, uh, but it wasn't so powerful, it wasn't so weak, it wasn't so strong, it was a bit weaker and a bit more cruder and a bit more vulgar. This was very clinical and very... They had to make themselves known that they were on me. Uh, it was that subtle. So that that was the following of this um, street theatre to let me know that, who they were. So who they are, I don't know. Um, some people say that they're Mossad. Some people say they're MI5. Personally, I, I don't... If somebody tells you they're this or they're that, you know... You're not going to believe it, are you? Because they're going to dis distract who who they really are. Personally, I think it's um, a private. It's a very powerful private body. So they are. I don't believe that they are um, military intelligence. And if they are, they're a shadow branch of the military intelligence. Um, but but what do I know? We see darkly. I, I'm, I was just on the end of the experience and and since I've um, tried to call them out this other other group I, I think Masons are involved this time I think this is more of a you know you know a psychopathic egotistical sort of um, people on the end of it rather than a covert clinical organized group this was very professional uh, there was no um, it was almost like to the letter. There was no childish f putting um, vulgar suggestions or or, or or we're gonna get you sort of thing like I've had before or your, you know, like really nasty kind of personal attacks on your character. This was very subtle, clinical, planned out to the letter and they followed it to the letter. This was almost like a professional body.
Now, during the time of this episode, um, the Hadron Collider was uh, generating and running around. Now, I personally believe that they quantified my DNA and they uh, tried to attach it to something. Now, I presume... Now, I got the... I got the... I got the impression that they'd, um, just by discernment, that they'd taken my, um, the code of the way my brain functions and, and, and they've mapped my DNA and they run it through a supercomputer. So they try to, almost like a soul trapping, they try to put my DNA into a computer and I personally believe that they, 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 um, run it through the Hadron Collider and it was almost like I I was trapped in something in my bedroom and that I couldn't get out and I had to almost like welcome and pray to God to, for deliverance and, and by the I couldn't have got out but I got out of this hole that was gripping me and almost like cooking me inside out I was kind of like frying in my feet and and I got the impression that um, they had controlled me to a quantum computer, and they had run my DNA sequence through through the Hadron Collider. And coincidentally, I heard a similar testimony of another few two people relay the same experience. So whether that's a coincidence, I'm not saying that I was fired through the Hadron Collider, but it. But um, it is it is probable, it is possible, perhaps. And that was the, the, the time it blew up. Now, it exploded. Now, that coincidence or not, I didn't find this out to months later after researching and just discovering that someone else had a silly, similar experience. And I thought, oh... Well, that confirms my my discernment and my experience and what I was going through in my bedroom while I was in my bedroom. And it also, um, it's almost like they'd run, um, almost like simulated at the same time my DNA, jumbled it up and were imputing it back all mixed. So it was almost like my brain had been rearranged and I could, I was all over the place. It took me a long time to resettle. So what they'd done, the grace of God undone it. And that, and I knew that the only, that is the only thing that could have undone it was the grace of God. Now, I don't know if that's true or if that's accurate because we see darkly, but that's what I discerned and, and getting the further evidence from other people saying they too also had experienced being fired through the Hadron Collider. So that was a taste of the growing technology and the power of this technology. Seldar, you know, tracking you, point cloud where they can um, virtually see you in your own home and all, all the crude um, targeted weapons through the wall, through neighbours correlating, or or people planted around you, car parts outside, somebody renting a house, and then they triangulate the targeting. And um, I, ha I had uh, readings, I had all these high readings in the home. The, ha the house was live for about a year. And that, that's affected my hearing, that's affected my whole metabolism, and I've suffered the, I'm suffering the consequences from it now. And um, that, that will generate glaucoma. Now, my, my eyesight was impaired. My dad was diagnosed with glaucoma, but he, that might be natural because of old age. Um, now it can induce diabetes, it can um, induce leukaemia, it can induce uh, tumours and they basically can create many natural health symptoms that won't be marked down and considered electronic harassment, it would be considered natural effects. So, um, 
after all that failed, I personally realised that I'm on a... They're just going to destroy, try to destroy me. And all I get now is a harmonic tone. Now, that's been going on since, which is about three years now. This is three years past, at least. And all I all I had was an automated 24 hours, 24 hours, 24/7. A I'm hoping my camera will pick it up. Now my camera can pick it up, but it's very faint. So I've, the only way it can be heard if 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 I magnify the recording. Now my mic level is up full, and the only way to bring it out because it's a very to the ear, it's quite, um, it's quite, it's very audible, and it's surprising that the camera doesn't pick it up. Pick it up. So I don't know if it's digital, if it's harmonics or um, sonic, or well, sonic's just sound. Um, I'm not sure the technology of sound, the different sounds, and how to generate different sounds. Uh, but it's almost like a, a siren. Um, electronic siren that, war that warbles and sometimes it's a constant tone but at the weekend it starts oscillating and warbling which causes more frustration and distraction it's like water torture you, your mind can't rest because all, all you can hear is this tone all the time um, I can't personally I can't at the moment remove myself from the environment so all I've been pinned down by is the sound. Now I've learnt to live with it and I can uh, block it out with um, background noise or... But at night, I, you know, I can't can't block it out. But I can, I've learnt to sleep through it and I've just learnt to live with it. Oh, <laughs> learnt to live with the noise, but that's the current um, fret level at the moment. It's just this tone. I don't get any electronic uh, readings anymore. Um, I get the odd burst, but that could be Wi-Fi. But I've a a absolutely, you know, it's very s safe levels. That's um, unless it's um, 5G technology, milliwaves. Um, it's in the 23 gigahertz. I've got no machinery to uh, equipment to measure that. I don't even know if there's that sort of um, tech available. There's Gauss readings, very low. Now before they were very high. They were constantly in the red. Um, walls were charged, the walls were live. Now uh, in our walls we've got a silver panel, so um, insulation, so it will deflect some of it but it will hold a charge. My radiators were holding a charge, the taps were holding a charge, the pipes and the walls were holding the charge and all the wires in the walls are generating um, a magnetic field. So uh, every Every I got a uh, it's a four-way meter. So I got um, radio frequency, a Gauss meter, and a AV meter, electric field meter, all on one one little unit. But it won't pick up 5G frequencies of the fifth generation, which is like uh, 20 gigahertz up to. Um, if if you go to Ofcom and look at the satellite to earth and earth to satellite and space to space frequency allotments they start around 20 gigahertz and they go up higher to 60 70 gigahertz and beyond so there's no machine no equipment unless you've got a lot a good eight seven or eight thousand pound to get a, a spectrum analyzer to record that sort of level um, I haven't got that sort of money, so I, I cannot measure if I'm being targeted by that sort of technology, and that's what's generating the sound. Um, so that's my current uh, position. So um, I'm sharing this just in, just for those, uh, anyone in the Christian body who thinks that this is delusional and demonic, and it's, it's um, 
it's not really happening it's it, it's paranoid well firstly it is happening because I've had the um, physical evidence right before me so I know it's happening and I know it's real so uh, it's something that you you need to be aware of but it's there's nothing anyone can do, it's, it's solely my burden, it's solely my cross to bear. And, and praise God, he's delivered me from it, so, well, so far anyway. And um, and I trust and wait upon the Lord to get further revelation of what this all means in my life and uh, and who's involved and, uh, you know, and I pray for, you know, I forgive these people I pray for their souls, but I'm doing this video in case this makes sense to anybody, anyone who's experienced this sort of thing, that not, not to be afraid to, don't go to the authorities, don't go to, only go to the police if you're physically being followed around the street, because that, that's, that's all you can, um, you can report things like that, but you can't report covert harassment, because they're already primed, Either to there'd be part of it, there'd be somebody in the um, the law or the apparatus of the law, whether that's wherever you go, the council or or the doctors or the police. They they possibly could be part of it, or they'd be compromised and they won't touch it, or they'd be threatened off it, they'll be uh, warned off it, or they just won't, won't want to go there, they won't want to get involved. So they may be aware of it, but they may not want to um, compromise themselves because it, they're, they're not going to be able to take on the burden, so they're, they're not going to want to touch a hot potato like some, some person being covertly harassed. And, um, and if it is... Um, the British government, they're, they're certainly not going to want to deal with it. Because um, if it's an enemy of the state, the uh, the local authorities would be all over it. So it's obviously in-house, and it's obviously with uh, in co-op with third parties, and uh, cults, the churches, Jesuits, Masons, Mormons, religions, religious bodies, and also um, Satan works... Um, through his means, um, superimposed with it. So it's two. There's more than one thing going on at once. So there's the uh, control of Satan on the human race, but there's also the organisation. So if you're a, a, a Christian and, and a brother, and you don't believe that this sort of thing's happening, well, you're you're sadly mistaken, and you you may not know how to quite deal with it if it happens to you if it is happening to you uh, or if you do experience it you know maybe this will be edifying and give you the heads up and it will um, sort of derail the power of it you'll have more power over it to not be thrown off and injured from it before you can get a handle on it by, by the victory in Christ um, and anyone who doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ, who's not a Christian, who's not, not been born again, who's not been saved and hasn't got a testimony of that grace and the power and love of God in, in a person's life going through something like this, I'd invite you to seek the Lord Jesus Christ to repent. Repent just means to turn, have a change of mind and seek out the Lord and, and believe and believe in the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ and read the scriptures, read, uh, seek the Lord, seek his face and, and believe and call upon God and pray for your salvation and uh, forgiveness of your sins. And the Lord will, will is faithful to answer and you will receive his forgiveness and mercy and love and the Holy Spirit and you will you will know that you are saved and you will know that God lives and you will know the devil's real and you'll be able to um, get the victory not only over this but over your own sins many of your own sins and this world, this evil world and you'll be delivered and set free from the, the yokes and bondage of this evil world and it, almost, it, it may give you hope you, you may be 
going through this, going out of your mind and experience something similar and wondering, you know, that you're the only one or you're going out of your mind keeping it to yourself. So my advice is to not be afraid to get to me, but wait till you're in a more sober peace of mind. You're not, you, 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 not while you're going through it because people rant. Because when, you, when you're experiencing it and you're making videos, you're just ranting and it gets polluted with your... And people can't... Um, the general public, the people you're trying to convince, can't um, comprehend what, what this experience is, is, is like. So when you're um, under pressure and you're in the pressure pot, you will rant and rage and you will get animated. And you will sound you will sound like a delusional idiot. You need to wait until you're in a more sober state of mind. So you can try and soberly share your experience without fear, without doubting your own self, and being confident and bold in what what you're experiencing. Because I, I don't care if someone says, Oh, you're a nutter or you're a you're a paranoid, deluded idiot, and I'm not scared of the authorities because I, I have Christ and I can stand my ground, and I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ, and I'm not ashamed of being honest and open about what I've been through because I want to reach people who are going through the same. That they, a, that they may have hope, and they're not going to lose. They're not going to throw their lives away because these people will destroy you, and they can destroy you. And they can get you, they can get certain vulnerable people to get things that they wouldn't, wouldn't otherwise do. And now the technology is getting so powerful, they can just overtake people. I personally believe they can trap souls, and I personally believe that they can throw people, overtake people momentarily, and get them to crash cars where they want to. And I believe that this technology is being tested on our. On, on people and perhaps our own government are aware of it they just don't they can't publicly address it because they're trying to fight it and perhaps there's a covert war going on uh, you know that, that an alien body is, is being uh, picking on uh, British citizens and and maybe it isn't the government but maybe it is our own government I don't know um, but maybe they are tackling it so they're covertly tackling it. They don't want to alarm the public because it is a, it is a thing of nightmares, and and this technology is so powerful that perhaps the powers want to keep it to themselves because they're using it. So you know maybe it's a, a case of two things, you know there's two arms to um, the devil. There's two faces to to the to it to to the sinful world, and to the powers that be. And there's a good side, there's, there's good people, and there's there's corrupt evil people. And there, and there could be, um, that could be momentarily, or that could be all organised. So I wanted to share this to hopefully reach out to somebody that, that would give them some peace of mind. Or, or to help them get a handle on it, and to, re and if they're not safe, to, um, to, to seek the Lord and know that he, he lives and he is merciful and he's just and he's powerful and he can he can lift anyone, he can reach anyone and he can help anyone that's sincere and can try and trust, puts their trust in him, puts their faith in him. It's, you only need faith in Jesus Christ. It's not about religion and organised religion. It's solely about your personal faith in he who's been dispensed and paid for all the world's sins, your sins, my sins and everybody's sins, but that needs to be received and believed for it to be received and only the individual can receive it and know it. Now, I can't share that with other people. I can't give you what I know. I would die for what I know. I wouldn't deny what I know and you could know that too. So that that's... that's um, part of the motive. My other motive was was for edification of people in the body of Christ who are perhaps aren't believing or unsure, who aren't sure about this. Is it delusional? Is it completely demonic? Well, these people are led by Satan and these organisations are satanic. 
you know they're not they're not good are they they're evil so it's an organized body it's also used by satan as a tool and an instrument and it and um it's real so um be careful to doubt people because you can brush people aside as as losers and that they just all they need is someone to believe them and understand they don't they don't I don't expect I don't expect people to help me. I don't want to compromise people, um, but I do. I am a, I am a brother in Christ, and I do want to be trusted and believed, and not written off as a, a, a nut job that should be sectioned. I, you know, I fear if I tell, if I, it, it, I know that there's certain um, areas in my life where I could have shared it, and people would have um, handed me over to the law, and I'd have been sectioned. And, that, and then, then the abuse would um, continue. So be be careful how you treat people that are crying out with these experiences, not to write them off as delusional or on drugs. You know, it's, it's any wonder that people do drugs to help cope. But the, uh, doing drugs isn't going to help. It's going to make it worse. It's going to make you more vulnerable and it's going to make you more susceptible to the technology. Because so I believe that the... Um, the current drugs are spiked to make this more gluey, to make it stick more. And there's um, components in drugs probably ge genetically modified. If, if, you're, if you're a Christian, you're, you're getting a legal supply. I, I would warn you, but you're in, you don't know what you're ingesting. And these are genetically modified components. They put, you know, diseases are put in there. All sorts of things. You, you, there's no quality control in breaking the law, and it, it, if if you're a person breaking the law, um, a government body or or a lawful body might deem you well serve your right. You know, you're breaking the law. We're we're experimenting on people who are breaking the law. So be very careful if you are. Um, doing those things because um, they will make you more susceptible to the technology and more um, likely to go out of your mind and, and lose your grip. So I'm going to close there and uh, share this, um, round off this uh, street theatre gaslighting MKUltra testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.